with nuclear energy. Um, I think there's two questions uh, with nuclear energy. One is the safety issue. Is the UAE right or is Germany right? I think the second issue, which is, uh, is really, is every country that, has, that develops um, a civilian nuclear program um, is going to be able to use that to develop uh, nuclear weapons. So what do you think? Who's right, UAE or Germany, Michael? Um, I think that Fukushima has been such a shock to the system that it's a reminder that, of course, nuclear power is always a big gamble in terms of safety because, you know, it's perhaps the ultimate um, uh, probability theory gambit where you say, well, you know, it's not very likely that uh, there will be a big disaster, but of course if it does happen, it will be completely catastrophic. And, you know, it's like we a black all, swan. Well, we all, we all knew that, we all knew that anyway, but Fukushima, unfortunately, has um, you know, underlined that in, in, in the most horrifying way. Um, yeah, in an ideal world, nobody would have nuclear power. You're with Germany on this I suppose I am. Yeah. Robin, I don't think you're with Germany. The take I have in it, right? I mean, Fukushima was, was, a, di yes. Fukushima was, was a disaster. Yeah, fine. And, um, and there were many, many, as there always are with these disasters, there were many, many warning signs beforehand, and there were many weaknesses in the Japanese nuclear regulatory system that had been identified and so on, but nobody acted on them. all these kind of things. What you then had the reaction in Germany afterwards was to say, well, you know, we don't, our, our reactors are a different design from the one at Fukushima. We don't have major earthquakes. We don't have tsunamis. So actually, we have absolutely nothing to learn from the Japanese disaster. It has no relevance to the nuclear situation in Germany whatsoever. Nevertheless, we're going to turn around our nuclear policy, declared only the previous year, and we're going to start phasing out nuclear power. In order to replace that, we're going to buy electricity from our neighbours, France and the Czech Republic, which generate it with nuclear power, but we'll keep that quiet and we'll pretend we're not buying nuclear electricity. And we'll replace, domestically, we'll replace it with coal and with lignite, brown coal, the dirtiest fossil fuel there is, uh, hence blowing our climate change goals out, out of the water. Uh, all, all the while raising costs to, uh, electricity costs to, to the German economy. So really, you know, a lose, lose, lose on, on pretty much every front, as far as I can see it. Um, I'm not saying that you shouldn't learn lessons from these nuclear disasters, you know, c clearly you should, but, you know, At what cost? nuclear suffers from this, you, you know, it, it, exactly as you, as you say, Mark, you know, you've got these occasional disasters which are very dramatic and which cause huge swings in public opinion. Meanwhile, every year thousands of coal miners die in China and thousands, hundreds of coal miners die in Ukraine, and that doesn't make anybody think twice about using coal. Uh, and at Fukushima, nobody, we should say, nobody has yet died because of Fukushima. And no, not a single person. I mean, it's a, it's a terrible accident for sure, but it does not cause a single fatality yet. Okay, I'm reading your body language, so I'm going to ask <laughs> you, how much do you agree with Robin? I know, I was going to say, I'm actually Swiss by marriage, and so, you know, in Switzerland, they've gone the same way as Germany. Um, but it doesn't really matter, because next door in France, there's nuclear power stations. There's one in Bulgaria that scares, you know, the daylights out of me, because it's so old, and it's had so many issues. And then we had, you know, I remember... So I think, I mean, I don't like nuclear, but I think people overreacted. I think nuclear will sort of slow down a little bit, but as Robin says, we're going to be burning more coal. Is that better for us? I don't know. I don't particularly like the idea of nuclear. What surprises me is that we were at the forum recently, the Dubai Energy Forum, and they were talking about not only one nuclear power station in Abu Dhabi, but Dubai as well, and maybe other Emirates. I'm thinking, you don't need that. What you need is a common gas grid. Qatar has the biggest, second, third biggest gas reserves in the world. Iran on the other side, when they get there, you know, when we sort them out. Um, then you have these huge gas reserves. Russia's ready to step in and supply. And then you can have a common grid. You can sell electricity to each other. You don't need nuclear power stations. I think it's scary, um, as you said, you know, climate and all that. I don't, um, I don't think we should go that route at all. And I mean, just, just, uh, sorry, I didn't want to start me the applause. Who's applauding? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, to, to steal that away from you, Kate. Um, I mean, just, just to respond very briefly to, to Robin. Uh, yes. Uh, of course, you know, there, there's, there's a, an argument about um, uh, the rational case for not reacting to Fukushima uh, in, the, in the way that Germany 
um, did. And, you know, it's the old debate about how people sort of instinctively think air travel is more dangerous than travelling on the road. So, of course, it's not. It's just that when air crashes happen, they're big and disastrous and, and, and they're in the papers all, and, and, and on the, online all over the world. But I think that ignores two things. One is that um, the sort of sentimental point that, that with nuclear you have to take along your populations, your voters, and uh, the point is if they feel that this is not a risk that they want to take, um, then, and in a country of, like Germany where, you know, people are very sort of sensitized to, um, you know, in, environmental um, uh, questions, then, um, uh, th then, then that is no doubt a sort of political consideration that was in the government's mind. But the other point is about hubris. I mean, this didn't happen in some ill-developed country with, you know, an irresponsible government. It was in Japan, you know, one of the most technologically, if not the most technologically sophisticated countries in the world. And I'm sure the Japanese authorities thought pre-Fukushima that they were well-placed to prevent a disaster happening. So it's a lesson about hubris, I suppose, and, and the fact that, um, you know, however safe you might be and however sophisticated your systems might be, there is always that risk and, you know, it can happen in a place like Japan or indeed Germany. That can, but you know, we look at Japan with admiration for their technology and I give them that, but there have been many, many warning signs in the Japanese nuclear program. There have been a reactor had been shut down a couple of years before after an earthquake. Mm -hmm. uh, there had been leaks. It, you know, the, the, uh, the Japanese nuclear company was completely in bed with the regulator and so wasn't really being challenged on its safety procedures. So, you know, great as, ja as Japan is, that particular case, there were a lot of weaknesses that a lot of people in the system were well aware of but were not acted on. Yeah, but do we know for sure that that isn't the case in Germany or other countries that have nuclear power? I mean, these things emerge very starkly after disasters, whether it's a nuclear meltdown or a financial crisis, but they're not clear at the time, and that's why the disasters happen, because people don't pick up on them. That's, yeah. that's my point. Yeah,